So I'm really pleased now that uh, Maria Laura Pena Nakura from Chile, who's the women's human rights campaign Country Contact, is here. And Maria, um, thank you for being the Country Contact in Chile. Could you give us an update about the situation on gender identity ideology in Chile and any other developments? Here in Chile, we are facing two, two fundamental changes. The first one is that our constitution is being changed. We have a year of work ahead uh, of, for our constitution. Until this moment, uh, they haven't talked about gender uh, identity. Here in Chile, it's a quite conservative country. So uh, I think uh, nothing will happen about gender equality. Uh, this week also in the um, Congress, they banish, uh, they banned two laws that attempted against women's rights and children's rights. Uh, they were stopped. So for us, it's a, a rather a calm time, even though they, uh, we are in a, starting a presidential race and uh, there are some candidates, the more liberal, uh, left-wing ones that are uh, trying to win people by saying they will approve laws uh, about gender identity and about uh, prostitution and that kinds of stuff. Uh, we're just a start, uh, this just a start. So uh, we are just watching here. I, I gather a group of uh, six women that we are working on um, being ahead of everything that is going on. And um, we are, uh, we are creating a system that uh, we could talk to senators and uh, politicians and people in municipalities that here are very important. So we can be ahead of what is going on. We have also created some um, uh, some boundaries. We uh, sorry, we we have created a, a strategic. A, with other activism in feminism that are also uh, against the uh, identity uh, laws. So uh, we are quite protective uh, till this moment and we are just watching what is happening and we will start, uh, start making things happen when we uh, notice that uh, we are in danger or something could happen. Till the moment, it's so, uh, here is it's very, very um, uh, calm for us. Uh, the UN office here for women, the UN uh, Women's Office is just working with the, um, the Ministry of the Women in terms of uh, what happened uh, with the pandemic, um, with the pandemic and the loss of jobs of many women here in Chile. That is devastating for us. Um, we have uh, go back for around 12 years in terms of women jobs. So uh, we're just, they're just uh, seeing that, that aspect until the moment. So it's very calm around here. Yeah, so um, uh, how about WHRC? Uh, how long has there been a group of women related to women's human rights campaign? And um, uh, what have you managed to do there? Um, I, I always, in my free time, um, I have a, I am, I'm a feminist activist and I have workshops, um, reflection and literature on feminism. So I gather a group of, of women that go to workshop with me that um, move in different areas of, of life and in different kinds of works. And we are six and uh, they are all very um, compromised with the cause. They are very interested because uh, it's here, uh, feminism is just starting. Uh, and it started like a liberal one. And when women start to read and to study, they understand that it has to be, there are some things that has to be abolished, like gender. So um, here we are doing a work and we are creating a strategic alliances so we can work together. Uh, for example, the law that was banned this week, one of them was just because the work of activism and I work there 
and I uh, show my support and my name and everything. So um, we were ar around 50 women that gathered together to stop this. So uh, I believe here we can do a, quite a good job in terms also of educating women and educating society why this is no good to have uh, gender laws before women are truly protected. Yeah. Do you have, uh, Maria Laura, do you have liberal feminist organizations or some mainstream feminist organizations that are supporting transgender ideology? As here, uh, the, the, the associations of women and feminism are not quite important in terms of what they can do uh, in terms of law. They are more important in terms of uh, protecting women against femicides and that kinds of stuff. Because here in Chile, we have a, a it's it's a really scary rate. So uh, for the moment, uh, the most of the organizations of feminism are working to protect women and children also uh, against law here in Chile. Uh, the pandemic show us that 80% of uh, fathers that doesn't pay their tuition for their children. So that are the laws that women are starting to ask for. Uh, that uh, that we are well protected against violence. We're unprotected in the, those terms. So that is the main the main thing is in in these days. Yeah, and uh, Maria Laura, what about uh, you? Why did you uh, become involved with WHRC, and what made you realize that transgenderism is a threat to women's rights? I start taking courses, uh, online study, more formal in different universities, and I start understanding that um, the problem, uh, well, when you face a feminist for the first time, you are wondering for uh, equality in law, no? But here, uh, in, in when I take the course and I, and I start reading, I start reading uh, different authors, and I understand that the problem wasn't the law. The problem is uh, the oppression, and the oppression is because we are women and because they conceive the idea that women have to live in a certain and have a certain um, the things to do that has nothing to do with what we want. So that's how I start. Uh, I am an activist also in, in Instagram and I start following different um, accounts of uh, WHRC around the world. So I wonder why we haven't, why this is, uh, this is here in Chile and how could I manage to, to be a part of it because I believe it's fundamental. So now with the girls uh, that I have uh, gathered here, we are starting to uh, create an Instagram account. We, we want to create it this month and we are um, trying to see what information we should be starting uh, to, to upload so a woman will be more, um, educate about it. Here there are a lot of women that feel that uh, feminism is important, but uh, as I was telling you, no, no education. So I think we could we can uh, do a, a good job and um, because we are changing the president uh, next year, it's it's they they won't be um, there will be a lot of promises about uh, things that involve gender, but nothing will happen. So we're safe for the moment. So what was it about these Instagram posts that made you uh, see or, or be, be attracted? What were they saying that helped you understand? I, I, I believe that what attracted me is that um, I think that when we're fighting by ourselves, it's so much harder. But when you start to articulate like an organization and you're a backup and if something happened in uh, Latin America, for example, in Argentina, we can, res uh, we can respond from Chile. That is very important. For example, here in Chile, abortion, um, you ha can have an abortion, but you have three causes for to, to take uh, the abortion. When we were fighting for those causes, the Argentinian sisters uh, start fighting uh, for the, the just uh, abortion 
for them. So they start shouting for us also. And when Argentinas were uh, fighting their law in the Congress here in Chile, the Chilean women start marching down to the embassy to make pressure also. So here in Latin America, we are very um, working, uh, feminisms are working all together. So when you have organ an organization like this that is worldwide, that you have webinars, that you have a lot of things going on, it's pretty interesting for us because we have more where to support ourselves from. We can uh, reach uh, for help uh, just more easily. We have uh, a lot of more things that are more uh, easily that if we are alone. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it has been great meeting everyone.